Hey guys, I'm Chris, and you're watching Ready to Die Fighting. Um, I've not been doing a good job of making videos lately. It's been lovely outside. I've been traveling, I've been camping, I've been doing fun stuff. I've not been doing a good job of recording. But now, fall is like right around the corner. I'm going to get back at it. I promise. I promise. Thanks for being patient, those of you who stick around and have been eagerly awaiting my next video. So, today I've got something a little bit different from what I normally do. I normally don't do, like, product reviews, but I got something really cool. I like it a lot. This is the first thing I've ever had like this, so I don't really have anything to compare it to, but I'm really happy with it. Um, want me to show you? Of course you do. Of course you do. Check it out. So, there's my feeties, my little feetsies. I'm wearing uh, all my pants. Get, I've got stumpy little legs. All my pants get ripped up at the bottom and the back. Uh, but I'm wearing an ankle rig. This is made by Warrior Poet Society. Right? No, it's not made by them, but it's uh, got their branding. I think his name is John Lovell. He is a retired special forces guy. I can't remember which branch or anything like that. I watch his channel occasionally. I think he's got some good content. Um, so go check him out if you're into that sort of thing. But he's got some products out and one of them is this ankle rig. And I'm a huge fan. Uh, let's, let's dive into it a bit. I'll tell you what I got in here and why. But that's what it looks like when it's on. And uh, I, as you saw there, typically fold my sock down over it. Now that I'm sure that this is going to stretch out my sock soon, and I won't be able to do that. But I bought an entire pack of tall socks like this. I normally just wear the little ankle socks. Um, so I bought an entire pack, and a lot of times I'll just do the long sock on one side and do the ankle sock on the other side because I prefer the ankle socks. But I feel like this just streamlines things a little bit, tucks things in a little bit more, and I initially did this because I was walking on a uh, kind of like a gravel trail. And this is medical stuff. So I wanted to stay as clean as possible. And even though I was wearing pants, it just seemed like a good idea to try to keep this stuff a little bit cleaner. And then when I did that, I realized that it kind of helped compress some of this plastic stuff here. Some of these wrappings helped kind of compress that a little bit more in and streamline the whole kit a bit better holds it a little bit more secure and reduces the printing just a tiny little bit and so I do that and you know I've been wearing this thing for about five days now straight and no one seems to notice no one seems to care and it's pretty comfortable it is pretty comfortable I don't mind it I don't mind it at all all right, so let's let's dig into this bad boy. See what we got. <laughs> Practicing my modeling skills. All right, so let's first talk about uh, what this thing is. <coughs> All right, so here it is. This is the Warrior Poet Society ankle, ankle rig. I think John called it the kinkle on his, um, in his video where he talked about this product, and, and I like that very much. I call it my kinkle as well. It's actually manufactured by Blue Alpha Gear. It's made in the USA. That's not something that's super important to me, but it's, it's nice. I consider it a perk. Um, you know, I'm not sure how much it weighs with all the stuff here. I paid, I think it was about 70 bucks. I uh, bought it directly from the website. It came within a few days it arrived. Um, and it seems to be very nice quality. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of material this is made out of, but it seems very durable. The stitching and the seams look really good. Um, 
this Velcro, everything seems to hold together very nicely. So I got it last Friday. It is now Thursday. So it's actually six days, or is that seven days? Six, seven days, actually, I've been wearing it all day, every day. I have gone shopping with it. I've gone, um, I took a, I think about a two and a half mile hike on just like a dirt road. It was, it was flat. It was just like a little gravel trail. Um, I went on another, I think one mile hike. I actually went on about a two mile, maybe two or three mile bike ride last night wearing this thing. I fell asleep wearing it. <laughs> I didn't sleep all night with it, but I definitely fell asleep and slept probably four hours wearing this thing before I woke up and took it off. Um, so I would, my big concern before I bought this was that is this going to be comfortable? Can I wear this? Will I actually want to wear it? Is it going to be bulky and heavy and make my ankle hurt or my knee hurt or anything like that? And the answer is no. I can wear this all day, every day, without any problems. The only change I had to make, uh, accommodation, was I did have to switch to long socks. I really didn't like the way this felt on my bare skin. But, um... I don't know if everyone would have that issue because I, I, I really, I don't like wearing long socks at all. Like I really, I'm barefoot as much as I can be. And when I can't be barefoot, then I'm wearing like the really short socks. Cause uh, for whatever reason, I just don't like things on my ankles like that. So um, I had to wear the long socks. So that I found that to be uh, pretty irritating. Uh, it's a supposedly a micro, and not anti micro, microbial, material so it's supposed to not get stinky and all that from your sweat while you're wearing it but I think wearing the sock it probably won't be an issue anyway as long as you change your socks at least semi-regularly which you should be doing um and it's designed to fit I think certain things like he had in mind when he put this together uh, and you can certainly buy it with all of the stuff in it I opted to buy my own things some things I already had and I just kind of stuffed in here and other things I had to pick up specifically for this. Um, all in all, if you were to buy everything new, you probably, I don't know, it's, it just depends on you what you want to put in here. But all in all, probably around 200 bucks, I think, for all the supplies. I think if it's already pre-made with everything you want to put in there, oh, I can't remember, it was maybe 150 perhaps? I can't remember. So, why did I choose this one over so many others? Because there's plenty of other people who make these. Um, and so, some of them are like elastic. And that's how it stays on. And it looked like you kind of put it on like a sock. I didn't like that. Um, even though it seemed like it would stay tighter to your body and maybe print less. Uh, I assume that elastic would wear out. So, this one uses a Velcro. And there's no... Um, I guess the only elastic might be... These straps have a little, actually, they don't even, they're not even elastic. I thought they had, a, they seem to have a little bit of stretch to them, but not much. Um, certainly not elasticy. So there's no elastic here. It kind of, it's going to retain its shape, hopefully, and not stretch out. Um, it uses Velcro there. So I like that. Um, I like the retention straps here. The big selling feature to me though that put this, that made me decide to buy this one over others was the fact that it has this little pocket on the side and there's one on each side and so I can stuff little medications or money. Um, you know I think he said he keeps uh, like some lock picks or like a handcuff key uh, in there. And so there's one on each side. And I thought that was really cool. And so that was the feature that made me decide to buy this one over the other. And so that one, I've got just a little bit of money in there. Um, at some point, once I get better at picking locks, you know, maybe I will put a handcuff key or some lock picks in there. Um, right now, they'd be pretty useless to carry. Uh, so let's talk about what I got in here. Uh, on this side, I've got two things. I have the soft tea tourniquet. Then behind that tourniquet is the North American Rescue S-Rolled Gauze. Um, and this is really nice because it's it's uh, it's gauze. You know, similar to the, you know this big roll of gauze. And this 
this is where we just keep all this stuff because we do practice this stuff and so packing wounds is something that's going to be so if it's like at a joint where you can't use a tourniquet or even if it's not a joint it could be a, a, a extremity and you don't want to use a tourniquet that is kind of like a maybe a last resort type of thing you don't always want to use that compression and packing a wound is um a lot of times your best bet uh so having something like this is normally in a roll and it takes up a lot of space this is compressed it's folded in like a s pattern i actually have some that's open so maybe we'll uh, maybe i'll do a little cutaway and show you how that works and so you can pull it out and use it to pack that wound really easily and it's nice and flat so that's why it goes in here next to that so that was in this first pouch and that's all that's in there in this next pouch it's a much smaller skinnier little pouch um or I guess compartment, not pouch. Uh, and here I have Leatherman Raptor trauma shears. And these are cool, they fold up, they've got a little belt clip on there. Um, they also come with a, you have a choice between either a Molly or just a utility belt um, holster for it. And so you just unfold it like that. And they are trauma shears. Supposedly you can cut through pennies and all sorts of things. I'm not doing that, I don't wanna I mean, it's Leatherman. I trust it. And these things feel like they're heavy duty. The reviews are great on them. Uh, I haven't really tested them out because, like I said, I don't want to dull my blade at all when I may need it. And so what's cool about this is not only does it fold, but you have a um, strap cutter like for your seatbelt. There's a glass breaker on the end there. Uh, if you need it, there's an oxygen tank. Um oxygen wrench um i feel like it has another tool and i can't think of what it is oh a ruler i don't know how useful that really is but maybe if you need to describe to someone yeah it's a three inch gash i don't know um i thought it had another tool i can't think of what it is though but the main reason scissors promise trauma shears so i keep that in the next container or compartment and then underneath that got two pair of gloves I'm just gonna stuff them back in next to that um, not so much a trauma <laughs> thing but some starry strips and I tuck those in there mostly because they take up virtually no space and they weigh virtually nothing and they could come in handy so why not why not uh, and, and these guys they're for closing up um, wounds so kind of kind of like band-aids well maybe not like a band-aid but closing up like if you have a long cut but say maybe it's not real deep you can use that to pull the skin closed um this is oh sorry got a sharpie in there and that's for writing on the tourniquet or whatever else you may want to write that you want to write the time ideally on the tourniquet so that you know you've got about an hour to take that thing off before you risk losing that limb and then this is a compact chest seal. So it's a little bit smaller, much smaller packaging. I have bigger ones, full size ones in my other kits, but this is, you only got limited amount of room here. So this will hopefully do the job. And that's gonna be for your chest, for like a, um, a sucking chest wound. Um, so like where air is getting sucked in from the person breathing in that, in that wound. And that is not a good thing. Uh, here's an emergency trauma dressing. This is going to be something kind of similar to an Israeli bandage. Um, so it allows you to, there's directions on there, it allows you to put some pressure on that wound um, and wrap it really tight and it's a, kind of like an elastic. I actually haven't opened one of these up to try them out. They're a bit on the pricey side and it seems intuitive enough. Like I don't, I don't know that I want to bust one open just to Play with it when I know how ace bandages work I know how gauze works I mean yeah. I think I think I'll take my chances and figure this one out on the fly we've got pictures though um, but supposed to be like an Israeli bandage it is similar anyways to allow that pressure to stop some bleeding um, and then
um, in that last pouch right here, I have a SWAT tourniquet. And these aren't, like, I don't necessarily like this as a only tourniquet. I love it as a secondary tourniquet, though, because it's multi-purpose. Uh, the, the, the cat tourniquet and the soft tea and I think even the rat might not work so well on, say, pets or on small children. Uh, but this one will. Uh, you can use this on animals, you can use it on kids. It can also have the double purpose of being a compression wrap. Um, so you can use this as a few different things. I, I would bet you could even use it as a chest seal in, if you're um, in a pinch because it's, it's not breathable, it's like a plastic uh, or a rubber. Here's one that's open. And so it's this thick rubber. And so, yeah, you could probably use this as a chest, chest seal if, if you needed to. You could definitely use it as a put, um, if you've got nothing but, say, a shirt or something like that, and you can ball that up and stuff it into a wound to stop the bleeding and then wrap this around really tight, that's going to provide a lot of pressure and um, help compress that to um, uh, help stop the bleeding. Um, so multi-purpose. So I, I like having this. And then on side or inside the little pockets here, I just threw in a bunch of extra stuff, like whatever could fit. Um, so some wound seal, thought that might be nice to have. These little eye drops, I love carrying these because oh, something gets in your eye, that's that's just the worst. It's, it's the worst. It makes things so hard to do. Band-aids, just a variety of band-aids and some little antiseptic. Um, triple antibiotic, sorry, ointment. Um, what else is in here? I wanted to make sure I had some aspirin because if somebody's having a heart attack, one of the easiest things you could do to potentially save that person's life is one, call 911, but while they're coming, give them some aspirin and that can buy you some time. And some burn gel. Because uh, it doesn't seem like a bad idea to have. I don't know. We get burned a lot. L little small burns when camping and things like that. Not so much in everyday life. And this is an everyday carry type of thing. Um, so that's probably where I should talk about why I have this. Yeah, so so why carry this? Um, well, I was thinking about all the emergencies that you're most likely to encounter. You know, I, I carry a gun on me at all times. But the chances of me actually using that are very low. Statistically, the chances of me being attacked in some sort of way that I would need a gun is very low. And then it's even lower that I would actually be successful in using that gun to defend myself. Um, yet I carry one every day. It's far more likely if there's an emergency that someone's, I'm going to have an, a medical emergency. Someone's going to have a heart attack. Someone's going to have some sort of a like diabetic uh, issue. I don't, I forget what you call it, like diabetic shock or, you know, I have blood sugar issues. Uh, someone's going to get hurt, whether it's a cut or a scratch, a little boo-boo or something more serious. Car accidents are incredibly common. Drug overdoses are very common. Uh, I mean, I don't do drugs, but encountering someone else who, who may be going through some sort of overdose or whatever. Um, those sort of things I'm more likely to, to run into. And a gun's not going to help. I'm not saying don't carry a gun. That's not what I'm saying at all. But maybe the priorities are wrong. If I can carry a gun every day and I can carry a flashlight and a knife and things like that, if we're talking about saving lives, if we're talking about protecting people, if we're talking about improving my chances of survival, the people around me's chances of survival, my best bet for doing that is with medical supplies. Medical training, medical supplies, you need both of them. So I have taken uh, several first aid courses now, both um, CPR, uh, it was basic first aid, I think, and stop the bleed classes. And um, I've also watched a lot of videos on YouTube and read a lot and I have medical people are in my family and my friend circle. And so uh, I feel like I've learned a lot to, to not be a medical professional, 
I probably know as much as I'm going to realistically know without working in that field. Um, but having the, the kit is the other piece of that um, equation. You know, you need both. So I figure if I have this with me, my chances of survival, whether it's in a car accident or a shooting or building catching on fire or well actually I don't know if this will help me with a fire but whatever whatever's happening this is going to improve my chances my son's chances and anybody else who may be with me their chances of survival and that's the point right that's that's the whole reason for any of this to, the, to be a prepper to for the physical fitness for this channel all of it is like I'm I'm probably not going to need to use Krav Maga ever probably not I hope not I hope I don't ever need to use a tourniquet, but some band-aids, probably some bandages. Yeah, yeah, it's entirely possible. I mean, it really is. And I'm thinking car crashes. Um, having this on my person, I feel a lot better about that. Like if I get into a car accident and for whatever reason, you know, I can't get out of the vehicle. If this is, you know, in a first aid kit off to the side, once the car crashes, everything is going everywhere. There, I'm not going to be able to secure this well enough. If it's strapped to my ankle and underneath wrapped around my sock and under my pants, it's probably going to stay there. And I'm just hoping I'll be able to reach down and grab it and cut my seatbelt off me, break the glass, get out, break my son out and, and get out of there if, if need be. So I do feel a lot better carrying something like this. Like that seems like it's got a lot more utility and a lot more likelihood of saving my life than the gun does. Again, not saying to stop carrying the gun. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying carry them both. If you're carrying a gun, you should be carrying something to save lives as well. That's, that's I think, the message that I'm trying to bring home. All right. I think that's all I have to say about this. Head on over to Warrior Poet Society, I think .com or something like that. I don't really know. Uh, if you want to check that out. Um, he's like I said, he's got a great YouTube channel as well. Um, I don't watch every single video, but he's he's got it. He's definitely got some interesting, good stuff on there. Um, more focused on firearms than I am, but uh, still good stuff. Good stuff. He's certainly knowledgeable. And I will catch you on the next video, which I might record right now because I'm down here with the camera, so I might as well do a couple of videos, right? Yeah. Let's get to work. Let's get to work, Chris.